Hi there, I'm Mike Desorch, and these are my two cents on the whole matter with Overwatch 2. Now, I'm not an avid player. I have played the game. I've streamed the game occasionally. Uh, I haven't played it in many months. I am not a professional player. I'm not even a great player. You know, I, I have a few heroes that I do pretty well on. Relatively well, I guess. But I, I'm not a... A full-time player I don't play it avidly uh, I play it casually occasionally whenever I get the itch to want to play it and I do enjoy it I do enjoy overwatch uh, I've never played overwatch 2 I understand that uh, there's some differences between overwatch and overwatch 2 they made some changes but um, as I said I am NOT a big player of overwatch so i really don't have a lot of skin in the game it's not like a lot of other games that i play on a more regular basis but i wanted to give my thoughts on exactly the whole situation going on with the pvp mode and everything when overwatch 2 was first pitched the very reason for it to exist the very reason for it to have the two moniker was the PvE mode, which was supposed to be this big cinematic uh, PvE experience, uh, potentially with co-op. It was going to be this big thing. Uh, what was announced recently is that that was cancelled. Now, the big issue here is, is that this was not a recent decision. This was a decision that was made before Overwatch 2 launched. Now, what's going to happen now is rather than a big campaign, we're going to get fed PvE experiences a little bit sprinkled in with the rest of the live service stuff. And, you know, people want to blame the devs. Now, I know that the devs, the people who are in the trenches who are actually making the game, they have absolutely zero say in this decision. They have zero, zero say in the decision to cancel the, um, the PvE mode. Zero say. It is all the executives. So this, this is their fault. This is their screw-up uh, to uh, cancel that mode. This is on them. And this likely goes all the way to the top to to, to the, the king asshole Bobby Kotick. Likely goes up to him. If I were Microsoft, I would go to them and say, Hey, uh, what are you doing? We, we're, we're going to be buying your company. We want these IPs. You know, we want these IPs to be healthy. You're here sabotaging this IP. Um, we want that PvE mode back in. If I were Microsoft, I would go to them and say, no, no, put that back in. Put that back in development. But, um, you know, if, if, if they came to us, if they came to the players, the, the more diehard players, and said, you know, we, we don't think that we're going to be able to deliver that experience that we had originally promised you, uh, so uh, we're going to, you know, still provide PvE content, but we're not going to be able to do the big overarching campaign. If they had come to the players at that announcement, and said, you know, we can't do that. We don't know if we will be able to do that. Um, so we're going to cancel it. They announced it then. If if they had waited till then to do it, then I think the backlash wouldn't have been as huge. But the decision was made about a year and a half ago. And they're only just now letting the players know. Which means for a year and a half, 
players have been led by the nose thinking, oh, we're going to get this great PvE experience. We're going to get all this great stuff. And then they find out now... Wait, so you decided this way back then, but you didn't tell us until now. You didn't tell us until just recently. And I think, I think their anger is fully justified. I think demanding answers is fully justified. Uh, when well, you know exactly what happened, what, why, why was this decided? to cancel this PvE mode and who decided not to tell the players until just recently, a year and a half later? Who made that decision? Because this is clearly a case of severe mismanagement on the part of Blizzard. Which, given Blizzard's recent track record is not really that big of a surprise. I'm still very bitter at them for Warcraft 3 Reforged. Me and Tigra put in hours and hours and hours into Warcraft 3. We built a, 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 a literally an RPG map that we played the hell out of in the original Warcraft 3. And... And when they released the uh, their remastered, updated version, and they included that uh, provision where if you make anything that and make anything in their map creator, it belongs to them, sort of thing, and and um, they didn't really make any real improvements to the game. It was sort of a kick in the teeth to all of us who were big fans of Warcraft 3. Uh, I, I really liked Starcraft 2. Starcraft 2 was great. That was that was Blizzard delivering on their promise. But after that, after that, Blizzard just completely fell off the wagon and uh, they've been focused on live service and half-assed efforts and just the management has just been absolutely piss poor at the company. And it, it, there's no excuse for it. Now, I follow the development of a game that is a very controversial subject in some in some uh, places. I think it's a very stupid reason to be um, controversial, but I follow Star Citizen's development. Now, Star Citizen has had a rocky road. There has been some mismanagement on the part of CIG. But, they haven't outright lied to people. They didn't promise something and then never deliver on it. Well, not entirely. And they haven't kept something a secret for a year and a half. Something that they had promised was coming, cancelled, kept it a secret for a year and a half, and then only recently told people. They have never, ever done this. And, you know, their, their development's not perfect. They're doing better. They could do more. But they are doing better. But getting back on track here... Blizzard, Blizzard is not the company that I used to know. The Blizzard I used to know, the, the company I used to know was a great game company. Before Activision came along, they were great. They were releasing banger after banger. The great game, StarCraft, StarCraft Brood War was absolutely incredible. The original Warcraft 3 was great. They redefined the MMO genre in its early days. They, they revolutionized it. Love it or hate it, World of Warcraft revitalized and revolutionized the, the MMO genre and... I don't think MMOs would exist in the same form that they are today without World of Warcraft. Love it or hate it. Love it or hate it. MMOs today owe a lot to WoW. 
for Blizzard reimagining the whole the whole genre. Now they've made a lot of missteps recently, and, and I think again, that's not the developers, that's the executives. That's screw ups on their end. And they've been doing these screw ups an awful lot. And I think a lot of it is I think a lot of it is financially motivated. They've been pushing quite heavily this live service thing and live service games as you as you've seen with halo halo infinite and some other live service games that the live service model is sort of kind of trying to die people are fed up now some games are still doing strong and that's because the, the that's because the developers and the executives behind the company are actually delivering like warframe is still doing well it's technically a live service game it's still doing pretty well but that's because they are delivering great content to the players they're not screwing them over and this People call Star Citizens a scam, but this whole thing with Overwatch 2, this is a scam. You were sold on Overwatch 2 for that PvE mode. And before you even started playing the game, they decided to not deliver it. And then they decided to not tell you until a year and a half later. A year and a half that you were mentally and emotionally invested in that coming in that feature coming and then they let you down they lied they lied big time they led you on for a year and a half and it is this is entirely the fault of Blizzard management, entirely the fault of the office of Bobby Kotick. This is entirely them. This is entirely on them. This can be laid at Bobby Kotick's feet. But ultimately, at the end of the day, these decisions are his responsibility. He's the head of the company. He's the head of Activision Blizzard. These big decisions to cancel a major feature of a game, a feature that justified the game's existence, to justify that too, at the end of that name, Overwatch 2, the cancellation of that feature had to go through his desk. Because that is a, a flagship game for Blizzard. And for them to do that, it could not have just been the executives just involved with the Overwatch 2 project itself. He... Bobby, Bobby Kotick had to be involved in it. So it is laid at his feet. This is his fault. This is, again, Activision fucking up Blizzard. Ever since Blizzard got in bed with them, I, I, I felt that, this, it, that the company was going to go downhill, and they have. They have. We have we watched them go downhill they're trying desperately to try and save world of warcraft from their terrible decisions and you know, I've, I've heard that the new dragonflight expansion is okay it's actually pretty good but a lot of players aren't coming back i mean I've seen a lot of players in Final Fantasy XIV who came from WoW and they say they're not going back for Dragonflight. Anyway, I'm rambling. Again, I'm sounding angry, but I'm not really that emotionally invested in this. I, I am angry about game executives lying to their consumers, to their customers. We've been getting a lot of that in the industry. A lot of that. Just... And it needs to stop. It needs to stop. I'm Mike DeZorch. This was my two cents.
Thanks for watching.